so before I share my screen, just kind of give you an idea um, of what I want to kind of show everyone today. Um, so I am quite new to all this, so you know, please bear with me. Um, but yeah, I've, I've made some changes in regards to the onboarding crate because um, I feel like it was missing a few things. Um, so I'll do, I'll share my screen and run it through. I do apologize, I'm on my laptop screen, so uh, it might take me a second to flick through everything. Um, so one of the first things I noticed with the onboarding um, is if, for instance, a customer, um, you know, they, or a client, should I say, uh, submitted a form uh, for us with ConnectWise, it was opening up the ticket um, as like a default user rather than the person who actually submitted it. Um, it's only a simple little thing that that changed it here. Um, so what what, what this what this essentially does, um, it uses the, um, the variable that it uses to capture the requester's uh, email address um, and it convert it to contact email, which this essentially does. Um, it, it, uh, it, it puts it through the contact on here uh, because by default it goes by a contact ID, which is up here. Um, for some reason I was having big struggles with it. So yeah, I got to find it by the email address instead. Yeah, and it works brilliantly. Uh, so now when somebody requests anything, it will open that ticket automatically as well. Um, so. There is quite a few few different changes. Uh, the main biggest one, uh, which I believe um, will kind of demonstrate a, a, a kind of it wasn't an end product yet, uh, but uh, I'll work quite closely with, with the Rock Support. What with this um, is getting our approval set up uh, for customization. Um, so I've added a little bit more than just the approval side, um, which I'll 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 give you a visual demonstration in a second, um, because you know the the general one that that's kind of built in it, it's okay but actually misses out quite a lot of information it doesn't say like what security groups or all that sort of stuff that you're actually you know want to give somebody permission to um so in my case um that's the wrong one bear with me so yeah we created our own own little one it's got our own little branding logo on it um it's got your two little web hooks in, built inside here um which you know it, it gives a breakdown of kind of what it is they're exactly approving. Um, and then once it gets approved or denied, it will also send an email to the requester to let them know exactly what's going on, saying, oh, you know, this has now been approved, you know, this will carry on. Or I've done the same with the offboarding as well, which you can see here. Um, you know, it will show you it's denied as well. So the reason why I made sure it had the requester's email address in is because when it's denied, you know, you kind of want them to go and ask them why rather than coming to to your guys for basically say, oh, why has this been denied when it's, that's an internal thing? Um, I thought that was quite key. I do apologize if I've talked too fast. I do talk too fast. Please tell me. Uh, I have a general habit of doing that. Um, so the actual uh, approval uh, process part here, um, I've got an update ticket status. It, it will, when it sends that um, initial request, what it'll do, it will flick the status of the ticket into uh, approval requested. Um, so I believe I'm not going to go through all of this because I know Will went through certain parts of it, um, which, yeah, it, it's essentially, um, this is kind of like the whole whole entire workflow of uh, the, the approval, essentially just building it all out, trying to make it into, um, you know, you, you, want to send, you want to send it as yourself, so we're trying, trying to bypass, like send it as Roost as well. So the way that I found around that, um, instead of, you know, because at the minute it, you don't want it to go through as roost if you're trying to send it as yourself um is inside that tenancy uh, we created um like a for instance a yitd at test um and then it will send that internal as well because we did i did initially have issues trying to send it as actual like, our support email to them um that we are will and jamie i believe from the rocks support found a way around it but i haven't fully done tested that yet because you know i was already quite way through this um so yeah, essentially all, all this is doing is going to create create the webhook, you know, everything getting processed, sending the the, the email, um, and then yeah, it's getting user ID. So this this one here is what I was on about the approval email, because um, what what it'll do is that's that's a org there that you set, um, and then you put that email that you created inside that tenancy, you know your company at whatever you want it to be, uh, whatever their domain is. Um, don't judge me for this, but my HTML is directly in here. I am going to put on a template. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. So it's a little bit bit messy. Um, and yeah, and then, you know, we've got it where it will then go go and send it off to the approvers that it kind of already set um, in the basic crates. Um, but yeah, once, once it kind of does all that, what, what it'll essentially do, uh, it'll update the ticket status again, because to me that's 
quite important that you know your dispatcher is looking at the ticket. They want to kind of know what's going on. And you know, if if your client requested this, you know, it's not an engineer doing it. It, it comes from a client, so you, you need it to constantly kind of be updated on every step it's doing. Um, you know, it, it will even update when it's denied. It'll update when, every time it's in progress or when anything's going off. Um, and it'll also update uh, the person who's actually requested it as well. Um, there's a couple of other little things I've, I've added, which I reckon were quite key. Um, this is kind of very, very simple, but it's quite effective, essentially. Um, one, one of the main things is, is you know, we have to manually purchase licenses um, at the moment. So having a ticket update yeah it's okay um but you know i thought right we'll be another way of kind of getting notified for it um and that's through email um so what it'll do it'll send an email to the dispatcher or kind of whoever you want it to go to um i'm not going to click inside because it's actually got my dispatcher's email address so i can't show you that one unfortunately um but yeah essentially it'll send an email and all, all it basically says is this ticket number this company um that you know they need to purchase this license um and then it'll update the ticket saying wait waiting input um but they're all small little changes but you put them all together it actually makes a huge impact because you know the client's always aware of kind of what's going on without you even having to lift a finger um your dispatcher's constantly knowing what's going on so they know when you know okay if they do use a parts done when do we sign it sign up for a machine everything will kind of uh, be prompted and updated on the way um i have done the same with the onboardings as well uh, offboardings so it's kind of sim similar sort of thing um it'll email dispatcher when um or, or whoever you know purchases the licenses um when the license needs to be removed so you know the billing is always accurate and stuff like that as well um but yeah i think i think that covers pretty much about all of it really